So I got a backbone about three to four years ago. And if you don't know what a backbone is, it's just a phone accessory where you can plug in your phone and play games on this little controller. So it just plugs in right there. Like that, easy. I think I got it around the time that it released and I remember getting ads for it and I wanted it so bad. I genuinely thought at the time that this would be a game changer for me. I could play all the games I wanted on my phone and I didn't have to worry about my fingers taking up half the screen. It was $100 and I was in school at the time and I didn't have a job so I asked for it for my birthday. And I remember not using her as much as I thought I was going to. I probably used her a handful of times, if that. And then I just kind of put her in a drawer and forgot that she even existed. <laughs> but I still get ads for it all the time. And I was cleaning up my room the other day when I found her again. And I was thinking, how come I didn't use it as much as I wanted to? So I decided to try one more time. Let's start with the pros. One, it's small, it's portable. You can take it wherever you want without it taking up much space at all. I brought it to work. I brought it to my mom's birthday dinner. You can literally take it anywhere. And the bag I carry is pretty small and it doesn't take up much space at all. And if you're a guy, it would fit in your pant pocket easy. How portable it is, is probably my favorite thing about the backbone. Two, the design is minimal. It's sleek. The build quality is decent. It's definitely not high quality, which is surprising to me for a $100 price tag. And the spring squeaks whenever I retract it, so that kind of sucks. But the buttons aren't super clicky. They're actually pretty quiet. So if you want to play at your mom's birthday dinner, you can do so without bothering the other people at the table. Three, the software. Backbone comes with a software where you can connect your Steam games, your Xbox Cloud Gaming, the Apple Arcade. It shows you the games that are popular to play on the Backbone. You can add your friends on there. You can even add Marshmallow. It has a button where you can quickly screen record your gameplay and it saves in the storage area. It's nice, I like it, it feels organized. Four, you don't need to worry about charging it since it plugs right into your phone. It even has ports where you can charge your phone um, and it has a headphone jack. Five, it's comfortable for the most part. When I'm not playing high intensity games, it's comfortable. And that brings me to the cons. One, it's small. Sometimes it feels like I don't have enough grip. When I'm playing competitively like Call of Duty Mobile, my hands tend to cramp up very quickly. Maybe that's just me since I'm gripping the controller, like my life depends on winning this match. But every time I've played the backbone, I've had to take a break at some point because it becomes super uncomfortable, especially when you're playing for long periods of time. Two, the thumbsticks. This is probably my biggest gripe that I have with the backbone. The range of motion and precision is just not there. When I'm playing first person shooters, my aim and spray is all over the place. I was genuinely humbled for a second. After a few games, I got used to it, but it was still a struggle. It felt like I was fighting against the controller. Do you wanna say something? And the only reason I was landing those shots is because I'm playing against bots 90% of the time. But if I was playing against real life other people, oh, I'd be cooked. Obviously nothing compares to the precision when you have your literal fingers on the screen, but that's the reason I wanted the backbone in the first place. So that my sausages aren't taking up 50% of the screen. But when it comes to competitive gameplay, I can't rely on the backbone. I will never get the precision I want out of it. And you might be thinking, well, maybe you just suck. In which you're probably not wrong. Later on, I'll show you another accessory that's similar to the backbone that I paid $35 for. And I will show you the gameplay comparison. Wait, you guys, I'm so sorry. Um, It's actually not $35. It, in fact, is $50 dollars and i apologize because i literally recorded this whole video thinking that this was 35 dollars i'm so sorry it's 50. thank you
If you're playing like Minecraft, Stardew Valley, Mario Kart, Peter Griffin, Disney Stardew Valley, I don't think that this will be a deal breaker for you. The low stress, low intensity games that don't rely so heavily on precision seems like a better fit for this device. Three, I don't love how close together the bumpers are. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Four, the price. $100 is expensive for a phone accessory. So because I wasn't feeling the backbone tough, naturally, I wanted to see what other controllers were on the market that didn't cost a Benji. I wanted to find something that was of the same map layout so I could compare the two as close as I could. And I bought this. MC100. Uh, it's called the Mobile Game Stretch Controller for $50. So taking it straight out of the box, there's obviously a huge size discrepancy between the two. It also came with a soft case and a charger, and these are the pros. One, it's decently sized. There are bigger grips on the controller, making it a little more natural to hold. It's obviously less portable than the backbone, especially with the big backplate. And that's kind of something that I love about the backbone more, is that that backplate is smaller and thinner. Dinner. Two, the build quality isn't that bad. I'm not sure how I feel about the retraction on it though. That part feels a little cheap to me. As well as the D-pad and these four buttons. And just so you guys can hear it. But what does feel above average is the thumbsticks, the ABXY buttons, and I love the little click sounds that the bumpers make. It's also lined with this nice protective rubber, which I also like. Three, this one is preference, but I love the RGB on it. I like that it has a few selection of colors to choose from. It makes the device pop and it's nice to look at. Four, the absolute best part of this controller that the backbone lacks is the range and motion of the thumbsticks. These thumbsticks put the backbones to shame. My hope was revived when I was playing with this bad boy. I was actually able to follow and track the enemies with the right thumbstick. We were working together as a team. It was so much easier. Five, I can play on this device for longer periods of time without my hands cramping up. It feels like an actual controller, a console controller, a big boy controller, if you will. Sometimes I feel like the backbone was literally made for tiny hands. Six, the price. I mean, it's $50. I honestly think it's a great buy if you don't wanna spend $100 on a backbone. And now for the cons. And I say cons in quotations because a lot of these are subjective. One, it connects via Bluetooth, so it is battery operated, which might not be a big deal for most people, but for me, I tend to forget to charge things. And then of course, when I want or need to use something, the battery's dead. So then I have to wait for it to charge. And that's on me. Two, it's not as portable friendly as the backbone. So not only do you have to carry around a large controller that you potentially could not have room for, you have to carry around a charger as well. And what's so weird, about this charger, it's a USB-C charger, but it won't take any other charger than the charger that it came with. I think I've tried three different chargers and none of them worked. The only charger that worked was the one that came with it. And I really don't like that. So not only do you have to not lose and carry around that specific charger, you'll also have to bring a cube. Three, there's no app or software like the Backbone has. Okay, just kidding, there is. But I'm not going to download it because I mean, I hardly use the Backbone app anyways, so I'm definitely not going to use this one. So between the two, which would I pick? Personally, I would probably go with the $50 one off Amazon. Because I play a lot of Call of Duty, those thumbsticks are a deal breaker for me. But do I think the Backbone is worth $100? Obviously, it's a subjective question, but in my opinion, it does not feel like $100. If I saw someone using that device and I didn't know the brand or anything, I would definitely not think that that's $100. And I don't know what part of that accessory is worth 
the high price tag. A whole console controller is like $70 while this thing doesn't even have real joysticks and doesn't even need to be charged. Is it the app or the software that makes it so expensive? I don't know. Personally, I think it could be like $75 tops and that's pushing it. Unless you really, really, really want it that bad and you got it like that, which excuse me, but some people do not. So dropping $100 on a phone accessory without being able to try it out beforehand seems like a gamble. Or order it off Amazon and try it for a week and if you don't like it, just return it. Anyways, that's enough rambling from me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. Let me know if you have a backbone and if you like it. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe. I also made a Patreon if you guys would like to support my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will see you guys in my next video. God bless.